All right, everybody, I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us today for our OneDrive and SharePoint webinar. Uh, the one thing I just wanted to say is, you know, as a lot of business models move into the more hybrid environment and as more businesses are moving away from uh, moving into a serverless environment, this is definitely a big opportunity to learn about the ins and outs and the, you know, the first step in learning those ins and outs of uh, OneDrive and SharePoint. Obviously, you know, at PCA, we use this as a big collaboration tool um, for any projects that multiple team members are working on. So, you know, to gain that knowledge is going to be great and make the team more efficient instead of just, you know, some being able to send files back and forth that have to be saved and things like that. So we use it here and we know that it's a great collaboration tool. So um, just a couple housekeeping items that, that, you know, after the webinar, we will be um, we'll be reaching out to one of the attendees to give away that $100 Lenovo gift card. And uh, once again, just wanted to thank everybody here and I will gonna let Josh take over and uh, get you guys educated on OneDrive and SharePoint. So we just wanted to thank everybody once again. All right, thanks again, Jason. Uh, so welcome everybody. Again, my name is Josh. I'll be your trainer for this next hour. So you'll hear my voice throughout really this entire thing. Um, and again, today's session is about cloud storage. We're going to be talking about OneDrive for Business and SharePoint. Uh, those are really going to be the main spots uh, that we'll be covering. And we'll also talk about how Teams kind of fits into this. Now, as a reminder, this session is being recorded um, and it'll be available on demand. Just simply use the same link that brought you here today. Now, if this is your first time with us or if uh, this is your first time in a Teams live event. Let's talk about the controls very quickly, just so you know how to interact with us um, in case you do have any questions. So at the bottom of your video, you do have your video controls. Bottom left-hand corner is your play and pause as well as volume. Bottom right-hand corner of that video is going to be our closed captions as well as settings gear that will allow us to adjust some of those caption settings to make sure that they're a bit noticeable, right? You can even enter full screen. Now, the right hand side of your screen is the Q&A. This is where we get to interact with each other. This is going to be a pretty key, uh, key area uh, since you probably noticed your microphone and camera are kind of non-existent in this session. So the Q&A is broken up into two sections. We have featured and my questions. Featured will house any of the announcements that the moderators make throughout this session. Um, it'll also house any of the questions that your peers have asked um, that we've decided to publish. So if you do see something in that featured section that really resonates with you, be sure to use that thumbs up button. Let us know of those popular points in the session. That way I, I know if I need to spend my time on any extra time on something or not. My questions is all the questions that you ask us. Our biggest thing with the my questions section though is keep in mind that the moderators can respond back to you privately. And if they do and are maybe asking for clarity on your question, or maybe you just simply had an add on to that question that you've already asked, uh, be sure to use that reply button rather than submitting a brand new question. That just makes sure that that ensures that the conversation stays nice and threaded together. It makes it a whole lot easier for us to keep up with what's being said. At the bottom of the Q&A is where you get to type out your name, your question, and hit that paper airplane to send it out. <clears throat> now we welcome whatever is going to make you feel most comfortable in asking those questions, whether it's your uh, using your name or even posting your questions anonymously. Again, whatever makes you feel comfortable in asking those questions, we welcome it. Ask those questions in the moment. So as for who's with you on the Microsoft side, I am going to be having my partner Roxana uh, acting as our moderator for this session. She'll be you know, responding to questions in the chat. Um, so again, feel free to rely on her, drop any of those questions in that chat. As for myself, my name is Josh Grice. Again, you're going to hear my voice throughout this entire thing and I'm kind of the, the, the subject matter expert for most, if not all of the topics that we offer training on. So I'm extremely knowledgeable when it comes to SharePoint and OneDrive and just cloud storage all around. I also have line of sight on that Q&A. So if you drop any questions in that chat, I'll be able to see it. If I feel like I can address something in the moment, I will. If not, uh, if, I, or if I don't, I might just feel that it's something better left towards the end of the session where we can spend more time on it. Now, now that the introduction's out of the way, <clears throat> let's talk about our agenda. Today's session, we are going to be understanding file management in Microsoft 365. Again, the big key areas are OneDrive for Business and SharePoint Online. 
Teams is going to fit into all of this, and you'll get to see how that plays in uh, towards the end. But just know when it comes to cloud storage, there really is only two places where files are going to live, OneDrive or SharePoint at the end of the day. Now Teams gives you an easy access way to get to either file, to get to any of those files um, in the session. Uh, PCA banners cover the top portion of the screen box. Uh, I'm not seeing anything like that on my side. Um, does anybody else have a big banner covering the top of your screen? Please drop that in the chat if you are. Uh, that way, if we need to correct anything on our side, we, we will. I don't have any kind of PCA banner, so um, I'm not entirely sure what that would be. Um, so back to the agenda, we'll also talk about accessing and editing your files from any of your devices. We'll work together in real time in documents and to showcase what that would look like and how that is facilitated. And then we'll talk about my absolute favorite thing, which is keeping your files protected and backed up. Towards the end of the session, typically the last 10 to 15 minutes, we will have time allotted for uh, Q&A. Uh, but again, don't feel like you have to wait until the end to ask those questions. Ask any questions in the moment as they come to you. Um, but also know that you know we'll have time at the end to do those deeper dives and questions or redemonstrations and so on. Now, the availability of data has exploded. Attention spans are shorter, workforces have, immo have mobilized, and the number of teams has grown, and workers are facing an ever more sophisticated security threats. Now, so with that being said, effective content management and collaboration is essential, and people are often working together um, much more frequently now, whether that's in small or large groups across you know, multiple locations and even in shorter time cycles. So sharing and collaborating on content to move their team organization forward, again, is going to be that much more critical. Now, organizations are going to need a modern content management collaboration solution that's intelligent, secure, and integrated into the tools that they use every day. Now, SharePoint Online is the foundational service in Microsoft 365 that powers content collaboration across the entire suite. Now, this enables people and organizations to store, access, and share files anywhere from OneDrive for Business. You can collaborate on real on Office documents in real time. You can work together on shared content in Microsoft Teams and within Outlook. You could build dynamic and engaging intranet sites enriched with Yammer and stream content. You can even automate business processes and build no-code apps uh, with Power Automate and Power Apps. Now, as you collaborate with your colleagues on files and across applications, you're going to benefit from a consistent experience and a power and the from the powerful intelligent capabilities that infuse the M365 suite of applications. Now Microsoft Teams is integrated with both OneDrive for Business and SharePoint. But the big key thing here is Teams is not a separate location. It's simply a collaboration point where you can access and collaborate with your teammates on your cloud stored files. Now this will streamline efficiency by making Teams your go-to app for collaboration and co-authoring. You can create, view, edit, and discuss team files and collaborate with integrated Office apps. Now OneDrive for Business, this is your, this is the place for your personal files. It's designed for individual use with only the occasional file sharing. You can find, view, share, edit, and organize files, scan documents, receipts, and, uh, and whiteboards, and you can sync files to your PC and Mac and work offline. When you think of OneDrive, think of it as your personal file cabinet at your desk. SharePoint is designed for team file collaboration, so you can publish to broad audiences. You can capture and manage meeting content, and you can create sites and news lists and apps and more. So when you think of SharePoint, think of that as more of that file cabinet that's right there in the middle of the office. Anybody could walk up to and grab files from and drop files into, okay? So OneDrive is personal, SharePoint is for everybody else. 
OK, teams is just a window that lets you get to both of these areas easily. So with all of that being said, let's dive into the fun stuff. Let's get into the training itself. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this PowerPoint. Actually, we're going to minimize that because we are going to circle back to it. And we're going to kick ourselves off with OneDrive for Business. Now, there's a few places that we're going to take a look at it in. Um, I'm going to start with at least what I, um, I find to be the most, uh, or the, the primary interaction that we all have with OneDrive, and that's our file explorer. So OneDrive is built into our uh, Windows devices. It's already pre-installed. And we have access to our OneDrive. You might already be signed into your OneDrive app. If not, then what you'll do is in the bottom right hand corner of your Windows device, um, in your taskbar, you will see a OneDrive app. It's typically going to look like a little cloud. It'll either be blue or gray, depending on if you're signed in or not. Now, when we open up OneDrive, if we are signed in, it will let us know one if there's any syncing issues and also just kind of a timeline of our files that have synced both to the cloud and from the cloud. Now what I want to talk about really quick is just kind of that sign in process and some of the things that you would see if you are going through and setting up OneDrive for the first time. So when you do sign into your uh, PCA account, the first thing that you're going to be prompted for is to choose what folders you want to have available on your device. Now, the big thing that I want you to keep in mind here is this is for files on demand, OK? Meaning these files here, no matter how big that folder appears to be, is not actually going to take up any space on your device until you start interacting with those individual files. But what files on demand does is allows you to see and access any of your files that are stored in OneDrive so you can access them whenever you want. But if there are specific things that you don't necessarily care to see in your desktop, in your file explorer, then you could just simply uncheck them. It does not delete anything. It just eliminates it from your line of sight in file explorer. You can still access those files on the web or via Teams. I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. And the next thing that we'll be prompted for is our backup. And I think that this is a really important thing to talk about because again, this is one of the first things that you'll see when you sign into OneDrive. If, you do, if you've already signed in, all you really have to do is click on that little OneDrive icon in your, your taskbar in the bottom right, and then click on Help and Settings and go to Settings. And then we're just simply in the Backup tab. Now, Backup is really cool because OneDrive has the ability to backup these three folders automatically. So your Desktop, Documents, and Pictures folder. Whatever is already existing in these folders is going to get uploaded into the cloud. So you don't have to do any extra work to get these files migrated. Anything that's already there just gets moved and now you can access it on the web or on your mobile device or on another device, right? You just simply need to have access to the internet and have access to your web browser. I personally am a big fan of having all three folders backed up. Hey Josh, just uh, hopping in there too for a question. How long does that back up uh, the folders for? It, it backs them up indefinitely. Uh, at okay. least to my knowledge, you have the ability to stop that backup at any point in time. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's going to just continue to back it up until you tell it to stop. Hey, thank you. So what's really great about it is you don't have to change any of your work habits either. If you're already used to saving things to your desktop or to your documents folder, then just continue to do that. Do it exactly like you have been doing and just know that now these files are going to be available in the cloud. Now, it'll also tell you how much space you have remaining once each one of these folders is backed up. Mine are already backed up, but what it would say right above where it says start, start or stop backup is it would actually tell you how large these folders are individually, right? And then it'll tell you how much space you'll have left over. So I'm going to go ahead and say got it. And those are really the key areas that I want to talk about in settings. The rest of the stuff in settings, if I'm being completely honest, you probably won't ever have to mess with or even you know worry about. Um, account and backup are really the only two tabs within your OneDrive settings that you'll really find yourself going into and adjusting maybe every now and again, if ever. So now that we've done that, 
our OneDrive folder is going to be available inside of our file explorer. It's just right here on the left hand side and I'm going to go ahead and full screen this window. So we'll see OneDrive. Now you do have the ability to sign into more than one account if you wanted to. And if you do, it's going to differentiate the accounts. You notice I have one that's just simply OneDrive and another one that's OneDrive dash Contoso. The demo account that I'm working with, I'm playing the character of this gentleman by the name of Nestor Wilk. He is an IT director of this fictitious, fictitious company called Contoso. On your side though, it would say OneDrive dash PCA technologies or however the company's identified internally. How do you exclude subfolders from the document folder if you don't want everything backed up? Um, you would have to move those out of the documents folder. Um, it's kind of an all or nothing type thing with that backup. So I'm going to navigate to OneDrive Contoso. This is my OneDrive folder. And notice I already have files here. Now we're going to talk about these files in just a second, but let me go over how to move things over to OneDrive because as you noticed, it's going to automatically back up that desktop documents and pictures folder. So we're going to already have those folders existing for us in OneDrive if we choose to back it up. And those files will start being uploaded right then and there. But anything else after that, we're going to have to manually move. So if you have files stored in, say, your downloads folder or in your music folder or in a different folder entirely that's not desktop documents or pictures, we are going to have to manually move those. And there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Now I'm going to work in my documents folder just because I have stuff here, but just know the process that I show you with my downloads folder is going to apply to any other folder or files that you have that you need to move. So we're going to just work with uh, a couple of files. So right up at the top, we're, we have an attendee report. If I needed to move this file over to OneDrive, then I would right click on that file. And if we're using Windows 11, we'll see a OneDrive option. And we just simply have a button that says move to OneDrive. If you're on Windows 10, then you're going to see the more traditional right click context menu. And again, we do have a button that just simply says move to OneDrive. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice that that file gets moved and it no longer exists in that original location. It just flat out moves it. Now, a big thing that I do want to point out now that I have these two windows open is you have a very clear and easy way to tell if a file is synced to OneDrive or not. So if a file lives in OneDrive, we have a column that's called status, and you're going to see these different status icons, clouds, check marks, you know, spinning arrows, um, little people, red X's, and so on. If you see a status column, that file is in OneDrive or it's in the cloud in some way. If you're in an area that does not have a sync column, like my downloads folder, those files are only stored locally on my computer. So I can only access them on this computer. So I showed you one way, right? Just simply right click and say move to OneDrive. Now I can highlight everything as well and I still get that same option to move to OneDrive. But the big reason why I'm personally not a tremendous fan of that move to OneDrive option is because it just dumps it right in your main OneDrive directory. I personally like to have things a little cleaner uh, than that, though my demo account probably says otherwise. Um, I like to kind of have my files a little bit more organized. So the way that I typically go about it, highlight the files or the folder that you want, and it's just a simple cut and paste. Make sure that you cut it though. Do not copy because if you copy, it's going to leave that original. Cutting is going to move it completely so I can cut those files. I can move to say the My Stuff folder and I could drop these files in My Stuff. And now I get to decide where they live. Okay, so you can either right click on a file and tell it to move to OneDrive or cut and paste. I'm a bigger fan of cut and paste. So let's talk about our status column now that we've got some files in OneDrive because the status column is super duper important. This lets you know the availability of your files. And in the beginning, you're going to see all, a bunch of clouds. 
all most, if not everything, is going to have a, a blue cloud, right? And with that cloud, that is essentially going to mean that that file is available when you're online. As long as you have internet access, you're going to be able to access that cloud-based file, okay? Now, as soon as you open up that file and interact with it, that cloud is going to switch over to a green check mark. Now, the green check marks, we have two different kinds, and I'll talk about those in a second. But the green check mark, that means that your computer has now downloaded, downloaded a copy of that file and it's available offline. OK, so as soon as you open up a file, if it's a cloud, I'll go ahead and use it with this Contoso purchasing permissions. Right, we're going to notice as soon as I double clicked on it, we'll see Word is going to open in the background in just a second. But that file has switched from a cloud to a check mark. That's because my computer downloaded a copy. And now that it's a check mark, a green check mark, I can now access that file offline. So regardless of internet connectivity, I'll still be able to work with this file. And if I do work with it offline, the next time I connect to the internet, it's going to push those changes to the cloud and update that file. Now the difference between the two green check marks is essentially a hollow green check mark is one that has the, the computer has downloaded it for us because we double clicked on that file. And if we don't use those hollow green check mark files for an extended amount of time, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, you get to kind of set what you would want that time frame to be. Um, but if you don't use that file for you know, a set amount of time, it will automatically switch it back over to the cloud to free up space for you. Any of the cloud files are not taking up any storage on your device. As soon as they become that green check mark, they are now taking up space. Now the difference between the hollow and the green one, as soon as we right click on a file, if we wanted to prevent it from automatically switching over to a cloud, then we would just simply right click on that file and tell it to always keep on this device, right? And then that will switch to that solid green check mark. And then at that point, the only way to get that to go back to a cloud is I would have to right click on that file and tell it to free up space. And as soon as I do that, it switches back over to a cloud and it's no longer taking up space on my computer. Now, as you work with your files and interact with them, your OneDrive timeline and your taskbar is going to just constantly let you know of different, different changes. We can see files that I've uploaded. We can see that the Contoso purchasing data uh, is available in OneDrive. Uh, I downloaded it earlier and so on. The red X means that there's a syncing issue and your OneDrive timeline is going to let you know what that syncing issue is. Notice I've got a message right at the top. So I can click and learn and it'll tell me, hey, we couldn't merge these changes. As soon as I say resolve, it will let me know, hey, the online version and version on my computer, they couldn't merge. What do we want to do? Do we want to open them online and merge them? Do we want to keep both files or do we want to um, um, keep both files for all the conflicts and so on, right? So you get to establish how to resolve that specific conflict. Now, again, all of your files in OneDrive, they are private. So as soon as you decide to share something out, you'll get a little person next to that file. So anytime you see a little person next to your OneDrive files, that's letting you know that that specific file is being shared. Everything else is private. We're going to talk about sharing files in just a moment. While we do that, I'm going to go ahead and right click on the file. We're going to go to OneDrive and I guess I need to select a file. OneDrive and share. Now I'm going to leave this window open because this is kind of all that I wanted to show you with OneDrive on your computer. This is going to be the main area, main ways that you interact with OneDrive for the most part, right? We're all used to using File Explorer, so we would open it up and navigate right there. So OneDrive is going to give you, make it really easy for you. Let's also access OneDrive on the web because OneDrive on the web is where we get to um, access those files as well and also get a few extra bells and whistles. So I'm going to go to office.com and log in with my account. In your case, you would log in with your PCA account. And now that we've logged in, let's try this instead. We also click on our OneDrive icon in our status bar 
and I'm going to go ahead and view it online. So now I'm looking at my OneDrive files. Now OneDrive Online and OneDrive in your file explorer are going to be identical copies. If you see files in one place, you should see it in the other. You should not have OneDrive Online showing anything different than your file explorer and vice versa. So we still see we have apps, you know, design. Let me just kind of pull this off to the side so we can see all of those same folders listed out. So again, everything is the exact same. So with that, again, we do have some other areas that we can go to. We have a really powerful search bar. Uh, it can search for any of your files, whether they were created by you or by teammates. It can also search for files inside of SharePoint. So if it says search all files, that's searching SharePoint teams and other places as well. But you can also specify, I just want it to search my documents, right? My files. With that, we're going to be able to see all of the files from here, and we can also create any files directly on the web. So if I were to create, say, a new Word document, it opens up Word Online, and now I've got a document that I can start building and creating. That file, because it lives in the cloud, that file is going to be able to take advantage of autosave. So that file is going to constantly save itself just as I'm working. That is the biggest benefit to having your files stored in the cloud, whether it's OneDrive or SharePoint. Those files are going to auto save, so you don't worry about possibly forgetting to hit that save button. I speak from experience. I was always really bad about hitting that save button. Um, so I don't necessarily have to worry about that anymore. You know, it's one of those things I'm kind of spoiled by now. So I'll jump back to this Word document. If I were to just type anything, I'll just type some those random characters. But notice in the top left where we see our document name, it's saving it. So it constantly saves that file. And I could rename that document and move it and do any of my other kind of file management options that I would want. So we can create new files. We can create folders to further organize it. If you were using File Explorer, it's just right click and say create new folder and that new folder would just sync as long as you're doing it all in OneDrive. We can upload things as well. So if you didn't want to go the cut and copy or cut and paste or move to OneDrive route, you can also upload directly on the web, whether it's you know files or entire folders if you're really moving things in bulk. Again, I'm personally a big fan of just moving things through your file explorer. I find it just makes things a little bit easier for me to work with. So we've got our files in front of us. Let's talk a little bit about what we can do with them because now on the web, we don't have that little person icon. We don't have a status column. We do have a column that lets us know if files are being shared. So everything out of the gate is gonna be private. And then we have specific files that are being shared. Now the way that we can share those files out, there's quite a few ways. If I select a file just by using that check mark, we have a save button in a few places. You're probably already seeing two. That share button is this little arrow jumping out of a box. So we've got a share button just when you simply hover over that file. We also have it in our ribbon at the top of the page. Also, when we hover over the file, we get a kind of preview of that file. We get a share button there. And then also in our more options ellipses. The more options ellipses and your ribbon are going to be the same. So any options that you see along the top, you'll also find in this more options ellipses. But we can also share. So let's go ahead and share this file out. Now I opened up that share menu earlier in my file explorer just because I wanted to put these two side by side so you can see that they are identical. So whenever you hit that share button for a file that is stored in OneDrive or SharePoint, you're going to get this same share menu across the board, right? That way you're not having to learn how to share something in OneDrive and then how do you share it inside of one inside of Word or SharePoint or Teams. It's the same process, the same screens, no matter where you hit that share button. So let's talk about it a bit. At the top, we get to set our link permissions and let's do this on the web. So we have our link permissions. So we can share our link with 
you might have access to anyone with this link. You might not. This option might be grayed out. If you do have access to it, I say run away from it. Run as fast as you can away from it. And I say that because this is the least secure. This is when we say anyone with this link, we really and truly mean anyone. So that whether they are a part of your company or not. Um, so again, try to use this one sparingly if you can. A good default is people in your organization. Again, my fictitious company is Contoso. Yours would be PCA or something else, right? So now you do have to have a PCA account in order to access this file. And then we just get more and more restricted as we get further down. So reshare this file with people who already have access. Maybe this file lives in a team, or maybe this file has been shared out with people already. And then specific people that we choose, right? So as you can see, we start off very open and we get more and more restricted or limited on who can access the file from there. My favorite is people in your organization. It is typically the default for most of the customers that we work with. But down below, we get to set some link settings as well. We get to choose if we want that person to edit or review or view that file. This is important because you might not want everybody to make edits and file changes to the files, right? So choose wisely. I'm going to stick with editing access and we'll say apply. And then now all we have to do is just specify who we want to share this file out with. I can choose entire groups like my Mark 8 project team, but I can also share it out to individual people like Deborah. So you get to choose. And then you would just simply hit send. It's always recommended to add some kind of message to that file. Please review this be before our upcoming meeting. Right, let people know why you're sharing that file with them in the first place. So we'll share it out and I've sent that link to them and they'll receive an email letting them know that they now have access to this file that I've shared. So that's how sharing a file looks and that's how it works. If I were to be in Word and hit the share button up here in Word, notice I have the same kind of share menu. So once I hit share, We get all of the same options. Now, all of these are grayed out because this specific file is pretty locked down. Um, it's only for people with existing access, so probably not the best example, but if there was any other file, I'd have all of the normal options just like I did a minute ago. Right, so the share menu is going to be the same across the board. Now, something big to remember and keep in mind is this download button. Whenever you see download, I want you to just remember that this downloads a copy of that file, okay? So with that, you're, you're creating a duplicate every time you hit download. What you would want to do, say if you're trying to get this file opened up in your desktop app, right? Maybe I wanted this attendee report. I didn't want to open it on the web. I can click on those more options ellipses. I have open and then I can open it in my Excel app. If you already have the file open, then I think it's under the editing button in the top right hand corner of that app, but you'll have a button that says open and desktop app as well. Those will typically be your go to options uh, if you're just trying to get that file opened in your desktop app. Try not to hit that, that download button if you can help it. Now we also have a recent section so we can see all of the files that we've recently opened. We can see any shared files. So now we're looking at files that are shared with me specifically or shared by me. We're no longer looking at private files. And then we have a recycle bin. So just like if you delete something on your desktop, it goes to a recycle bin. It's going to do that here in uh, OneDrive as well. These files typically hang out here for 90 days. And then after that, they move to a second stage recycle bin. And they hang out there for typically another 90 days. So you've got a couple of safety nets for you. If you delete a file, you don't have to stress. <laughs> but don't leave it there for too long. Now, with all of that being said, this kind of brings me to the end of the OneDrive piece. Now, everything that I'm going to show you, we're going to switch gears and talk about SharePoint now. A lot of the SharePoint and OneDrive features that I'm going to be going over are going to be the same. 
So I'm going to navigate to. Do this a different way just because my browser seems to be acting a little bit funky. I promise you we'll talk about this team stuff in just a moment. Uh, I'm just going to kind of fly through this. Just because I want to get this opened up on the web. So now I'm in SharePoint. And we're again talking about documents, right? And files. So we're not really going to mess with any of the other SharePoint, you know, aspects. But I've got a Mark 8 project team. This is part of this is a Teams site. So all of these files live inside of a team as well, inside the channels. So notice we have a section for our channels. But let's just simply talk about the files themselves because the files is kind of what we all care about. Now the files inside of SharePoint, you get a little bit more control and customization over them. Let me work in this design channel though, because I've got all the files that I want here. So we can add additional columns to add more metadata to our files, right? We have a column that we've created for owner of the document. We have another for confidentiality and what department that this document is for. Is, is the file shareable or not? Right? These are all columns that we've created ourselves to create that additional metadata to help sorting and finding our files a little bit easier. Now with your files inside of SharePoint, we get a lot of the same kind of things. We get a very similar, if not identical, menu bar or ribbon where we can create new documents and upload files. Now we can edit our files in what we call a grid view. And this kind of puts it in you know, more of like a spreadsheet type view. And we can manually go through and we could change up multiple you know, cells at once if we wanted to. And you know, affect multiple files at once. But with the files themselves, working with them, opening them up, editing them, it's gonna feel just like anything else. We have a share button still. And we get that same share menu. Files that live in SharePoint, you're almost always going to see the anyone disabled. But again, we get that same share menu, right? So sharing a file inside of OneDrive is the same. Sharing a file inside of Teams is the same. But I want to talk about one of my absolute favorite things, and that is the fact that you can co-author on these files. So I've got a usability test file. It's in my design channel of this Mark 8 project team. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And I might not necessarily have any collaborators join this file um, in this moment right now, but it's OK because I can still show off quite a bit. So when we hit that share button and we share that file out to somebody. If they click on that link and actually open that file up and start interacting with it, we'll actually see everybody's profile picture or their initials pop up in this open space to the left of the comments button. So we can actually see who has the file open. I can select their, their name from this you know, menu in my ribbon, and I can actually see where they're at in the file, and I could jump to that space in that file. So if you know, I saw Deborah in this file and she was on page four, I could jump right to page four and see exactly where Deborah is at. What's also really cool is we see you know, every person that has the file open, not only are we going to see their initials and profile picture, but everybody gets assigned a random color. And that color that you get assigned is for your text cursor. So we know where different people are at inside of the file. So we can see them actually editing and making those changes in real time. And that lets you know who is making what changes. Now, just to ensure that you know we don't have anybody stepping on anybody else's toes, uh, there are some kind of rules when it comes to co-authoring inside of files. With say like a OneDrive or a Word document, you can't have more than one person working on the same line of text. Uh, if you're inside of Excel, you can't have more than one person editing the same cell at a time. Um, again, that is to ensure that nobody is typing over anybody else. But we can see those edits being made in real time and we can even leave comments and have very focused conversations about pieces of the file. So you'll notice off to the right, we have a comment 
uh, from Alan. Nestor, uh, please change all section titles to bold and bigger font. And then it looks like Nestor, which is me, made an edit. We can see, you know, Alan looks great, says it looks great, and Christy is uh, letting us know that she's here. So we can make those edits in real time, and if we wanted to bring somebody's attention to something specific, then all we really have to do is find that specific area of the file and highlight it. As soon as we highlight it, we get this little comment bubble that pops up off to the right. And this allows us to add a comment about this specific area. Right, so I can say, hey, emotional connection is the key, is the key. Um, can we expand on this? Or I've, I've left a few comments already, so I won't necessarily bore you with creating another. But we're able to give that feedback about specific pieces, right? If, if we didn't necessarily want to make an edit or a change, we can leave those comments. And all of these co-authoring features are going to exist in OneDrive, Teams, and SharePoint, right? They're all going to be the same. So we can make those edits in real time. We can leave those comments and have those conversations and even mark specific you know, conversations or comments as completed. We can view all of the comments in a file and jump to any specific one. And it highlights that comment and lets us know where it's at. So that's a little bit about co-authoring. Now, the big thing why I wanted to talk about co-authoring is when you do have people editing files, mistakes are bound to happen. Let's be honest. I mean, we're all human. Nobody is perfect. You know, sometimes we get a little overzealous and, you know, maybe delete one too many things. That happens. Uh, don't worry. You know, if, if mistakes happen, it's, it's not the end of the world. So let's say, for example, with this usability test file, um, I was making some edits and I deleted a pretty critical piece of that file. Um, and autosave has now saved the file and those new changes are saved, right? It's not the end of the world. We do have access to what we call version history. And version history is taking snapshots of that file. So every time you see autosave auto doing its thing, it's actually making a new version every single time. Version 1.0, that's the file in its infancy when it first started. And every other version that you see after that is an edit that's been made. Now, again, we'll say that version 29, I made a mistake. So I can select a specific version just by clicking on that timestamp, and it'll open up that old version of that file and let me see what it looks like. So what I could do is I could just go through and I can highlight something and copy and paste it if I just needed a small piece of it. Or if it was something big enough, I could restore that file. And restoring it is going to make that the new live file that everybody works with. So let's say that I wanted to restore version 27. I can click on the drop down menu, say restore. It does want me to confirm it, so we'll say okay. And then watch what happens. We have version 30. It does not move 27 to the top of the list. It keeps 27 where it's at. That way we can keep that timestamp, keep that you know um, integrity of the version history. And now it's just made that um, that copy, essentially. And now the file looks exactly how it looked back here on the 5th. So I rolled it back 20 days. And at version 29, if this one had such a big error that we don't want anybody to accidentally restore the version, we can delete that old version. And notice we go from 28 to 30. Again, it keeps that integrity. So it's not going to renumber all of your versions. It keeps them all as is. You just might see some spots where some versions are skipped. And that's your key indicator that the version was deleted. Now, any versions that you delete do go to the recycle bin. So don't worry, you can always restore them. They're not deleted permanently, at least not right away. But that's version history. It's one of my absolute favorite things. My teammates and I, we absolutely swear by it. Now, there's a ton more that we could talk about when it comes to SharePoint. Um, but keep in mind that your files inside of SharePoint, as far as managing them and working with them, everything that I just showed you with, uh, with OneDrive applies here as well. Just know that SharePoint it is a shared space from the get-go, hence the name SharePoint. Right? OneDrive is private from the get-go. You get to choose what you want to share. 
SharePoint is the reverse. This is a collaborative space, so everybody that has access to this Mark 8 project team has access to all these files. They can edit them, they can change them, they can do whatever they want. So again, that is going to be the biggest thing. Now let's talk about how Teams fits into all of this, because Teams, there's a kind of common misconception that Teams is a third location for files. And while I can understand how that, you know, gets confused, uh, it's very important to know that share uh, teams is not an a third file location it is just a window into both onedrive and sharepoint every team that is created those or every team that gets created gets a sharepoint site that is created on the back end that happens automatically so you can't have teams without sharepoint so we get to see all of our files. All of the files that we were just working with on the web were actually inside of this team. Now we do have a files tab inside of Teams, but if I'm being completely honest with, with you, I would say don't worry too much about this files section of Teams. I say that because it's a little bit of a mess. What I mean by that is we have a recent section and recent is going to do exactly that. It shows you all of your recent files. But the big thing is it kind of dumps them all together. So whether those files live in a team or whether they live in OneDrive, they're all going to show in this same list. I kind of refer to this area as the dump. It just kind of dumps all of these files here. Now, it's important to know where that file is located so you're making you're working with the right files because sometimes you have some that have you know, the same, similar, if not identical names, but they're two different completely files. Uh, they're stored in two completely different locations. So make sure that you know the location. You can also really narrow it down and say, hey, I just want to see the Teams files. And the Teams files is not going to be that much better because it's going to show all of your files across all, every team uh, that you are a part of. So again, your location is going to be very important to keep in mind. But you can also view your OneDrive folder and access your files here as well. So again, Teams is not a third location to share files. It is just a, a nice window into both of them. If you are wanting to find a file in Teams, I would personally say navigate to that specific file or channel or team or channel and jump to that files tab of that channel to find the file that you're looking for. I personally find it's just a lot easier to search for it that way or use your search bar. Now we got about 10 minutes left. I want to talk about one more thing since we're still inside of Teams. I want to talk about how another place that OneDrive fits into play. So with your Teams files, files that live in a Teams channel, those files are housed by SharePoint. Files that are inside of your chat, though, that you're sharing inside of a chat, those are actually going to be stored in OneDrive. So what you'll notice is as you start sharing files inside of your chats, you're going to get a folder that gets created inside of your OneDrive folder that's called Microsoft Teams chat files. And when you open it, this will list out every file that you shared inside of a chat. Now, this is only going to be files that you have shared, not files that have been shared with you. So again, really important to know. Now let's say, for example, we wanted to have quick and easy access to these Teams or SharePoint files in our file explorer, right? We didn't want to have to navigate to this Teams uh, files or to that SharePoint site just to get to a specific file. What if we wanted to have that easy access in our file explorer? There's a couple of ways that we can go about it. We do have a sync and add shortcut to OneDrive button. These three buttons, sync, download, and add shortcut to OneDrive, they are all very often confused. So I told you earlier, download creates a copy of the file. Sync, what that does is when you sync it, I think I'm already syncing that file. We'll try a different one. Oh, there's nothing here. Let me just upload a random file really quick. Uh, you, you're going to be the one. So let's say that I wanted to access the files from this leadership channel. I can sync that folder. And what happens is it adds it to my OneDrive. 
And on the left, it's not, oh, here we go, just popped up. We'll get a little building that will have, you know, our company's name. And these are files that we've synced to our computer. So now we get offline access to those specific files. Here's the one that I just did. We get that cloud icon. The important thing to note is if you use that sync button, it is device specific. It was only going to affect this computer that I'm on right now. If I wanted to be able to access these files anywhere, add the shortcut to OneDrive. When you do that, when you go to OneDrive, you'll actually get a new folder with kind of a little link icon on it. And this allows you to access those Teams files or SharePoint files right here via your OneDrive so you can access them anywhere. So now I have offline access to these Teams files um, nice and easy. Now, with all of that being said, we've got seven minutes left. I want to make sure that we have some time for questions. I don't see any in the chat at the moment, um, but feel free to drop those questions in the chat. If there's something specific you'd like to know or have me go over inside of uh, cloud storage, by all means, let me know. Um, I'm going to, uh, Roxana is going to be sharing a link to a survey in the chat here in just a moment. If you could take a few moments to fill out this survey, I would greatly appreciate it. This survey is about me specifically as a trainer. So if you did enjoy this session, if you thought that this was really helpful and informative, I appreciate those nines and tens. Keep in mind that a nine or a 10 does not mean that it was perfect. It just means that I came here and I taught you something useful. At the bottom of the session or the survey, there's a more comment section where you can actually let us know if there's additional content that you'd like to see. We're just barely scratching the surface when it comes to um, SharePoint files and collaboration and Teams and so on. So if you'd like to see a deeper dive in SharePoint files and Teams um, documents and channels or files, uh, let us know in that survey. We're happy to sit down and see what we can do to make that happen. Uh, so take a few moments to fill out that survey. I'm going to hand things over to Jason, though, because he has some uh, words he wants to close us out with. Yep. Josh, thank you very much. That was definitely helpful, and I, I definitely learned a, f a few things that will help me in my day to day. We did have one question here um, relating to um, excluding subfolders. The question was, how do you exclude subfolders from the documents folder if you don't want everything in documents backed up? Um, unfortunately, uh, it is kind of an all or nothing, so you can't tell it to exclude certain subfolders. Um, okay. it, it's again, it's going to take that entire folder or none of that folder. Okay. Um, I think you did address that, but I wasn't sure if uh, that was a, a question that was published there. So, um, yeah. so thank you for that. OK, so um, thank you once again for everybody joining uh, this first session. We will be holding additional sessions uh, getting get started with SharePoint online on February 22nd. And then on March 29th, we'll have go further with SharePoint online. So if you have enrolled, we can enroll you manually on our end as well for those next sessions to learn a little bit more. We would ask that um, if you have the opportunity, please use the QR code here to uh, you know follow us on any of our social media pages. Keep stay connected with us for any of the other events and promotions that we will be having. And we just wanted to thank Josh and Roxana once again for uh, the training session. And we hope everybody has a great day. And we'll be reaching out to uh, announce the winner of the Lenovo gift card uh, shortly after this, and we'll send that out via email. So thank you once again, and Josh, thanks for the great uh, session here. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us.